Uh, so yeah, uh, is this the right screen that you are actually uh, looking at? We are seeing just a. Oh, I just pause. I just pause the screen. Okay, okay. You just pause the screen. Right. We'll start in three more minutes. Uh, I have people joining the session. Let for two more minutes. Uh, start it. So yeah, uh, is this the right screen that you are actually? Hi guys, uh, we see so many messages that sound is not audible or available and all. Uh, guys, we request you all to connect to the uh, session. Session will start in two more minutes. Before uh, we start on with the session, uh, I would like to say hi to all of you. Welcome to HIW's uh, training platform, guys. Uh, so this is our uh, first webinar where we are conducting a free workshop to all the electrical and electronics as well as EIE candidates. Uh, to learn something on embedded systems, to understand like what embedded system is all about. Um, so we have Surya here. Uh, hi, Surya. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Uh, I can hear you. Yes, yes. You can uh, start the session, Surya. Thank you. Please go ahead. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Surya. So hello, everyone. Uh, this is Surya Prakash. Uh, so I'm the... Uh, technical support for HIAA. So I am here to uh, take the class regarding the embedded, embedded system. So today is uh, for the three, three days of session. So today is the <clears throat> day one uh, with the title introduction to embedded systems with uh, basic like both boards available that is like Arduino and uh, STM controllers. So before uh, starting the session, as we are at the learning period, uh, so I suggest you to not to engage with the hard, uh, hardware directly. Instead of engaging with hardware directly, uh, please try to use some simulators. So I'll start with those simulators because hardware uh, has uh, hardware has a the, what we call I think <clears throat> with uh, some disadvantages like uh, you need to purchase and if you uh, ignore any small point, then it leads to a huge loss for you. So uh, instead of going with that kind of hardware, so uh, once you get expertise into this uh, hardware and programming and uh, implementation and handling, then you can go for hardware. So as of now, let's uh, continue with the uh, Surya, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, your voice is not uh, clear, Andy. Could you please check your uh, Wi Fi net network or so something? Let's say, can anyone confirm that you can able to see my screen? And... Uh, Surya, can you hear me? Uh, Just uh, give me a minute. You, your voice is interrupting. Please, yes, please yes, check. I can hear you. Hello. Uh, now yes. can you? Hear me? Yes, yes, we are.
can you see the screen right now uh yeah yeah we can see your screen where i could see the meeting chart and all those we are able to see your hiwe i mean zoom uh, tab yeah yeah yes yes <clears throat> okay fine so so this is surya prakash so think again uh, so before going to the session we are, uh, we are here to introduce we are here with the day one class that is introduction so, <clears throat> so introduction to the embedded systems so that is uh with the the simulation so here uh, we have uh, a software or a solution of a thinkercad where in thinkercad uh, uh, we are allowed to simulate uh, the arduino directly so along with the introduction and working and programming everything can be done virtually so i suggest uh, everyone like uh, instead of going with the physical hardware so just try with thinkercad and make some Uh, demos and try to um, do some projects in uh, in this thinker cat so that you can you'll get some experience and yeah and uh, you can able to handle the hardware along and, uh, and the software so because the hardware uh, if you want to go with embedded system you need to purchase the hardware which costs you more and even simply which costs you actually so Insert, but just before learning, if you go with the hardware directly, it may uh, there are many chances like uh, improper handling may damage this uh, hardware equipment. So just to first learn and understand regarding the uh, basics and understand regarding how to handle the uh, boards and uh, power supply and even handle how to handle the program. So using simulator. So in simulators, you can undergo with multiple tests for multiple times. This is completely free of cost. So let's uh, let's start the session. So here, uh, once you open ThinkerCAD, just uh, sign in with Google account. So I just sign in with my Google account and create a new circuit. So go to the circuit. This is the workspace area. Let's begin with the audio bench. So, before beginning the uh, things like uh, we need to understand the hardware specifications of this board. So, this is Arduino UNO, the first development board or experimental board developed by Arduino, and it's named as UNO, which is which means one. So, some Greek language, uh, uh, some Greek language in the Greek language UNO UNO, which means one. So Arduino's first experimental board developed by Arduino, and uh, it it is an experimental device. It does not go for standard device. So this is this is just used to learn and understand how the Arduino actually works with the software and the hardware equipment. So you see, uh, I'll tell you each and every point regarding the board, this board. <clears throat> so this is the reset push button. So here you, you can have uh, ability to push. Uh, the this is this is a reset button, so it's a push button actually. If you press this button, the entire board, uh, entire system will be rebooted or restart. And then this is the micro USB, not micro. It is USB Type B, and uh, it is used to upload program and uh, uh, it provides the interface between your system and the board. So this is a debugging IC. So debugging. So that uh, the term debugging is nothing but the inbuilt process, the observation of inbuilt process happening in the internal components of, of the or internal uh, working of this board in our system. So this chip provides that ability. So it it, it connects the system software to the pro ICs or the microcontrollers uh, IC. So this is the bridge between both of them. And the next one is this is the voltage regulator. So <clears throat> it is three point three volts voltage regulator and a DC power jack and two capacitors for uh, stabilization. And this is the crystal oscillator. 
So this crystal oscillator gives the sufficient uh, electrical signal. It's similar to the hardware. The signal that provides by this crystal oscillator is exactly similar to the hardware or hardware. And you're gonna have three LEDs. One is line LED, and that is next one is here you have power LEDs, and this is TX LED, and that is RX LED. So power LED, whenever you power on a device, this LED will be turned on. And line LED will be turned on for any of the GPIOs connected. And it implements this line LED is the one which indicates the functioning of this board. Power LED is just uh, indicates the power state of the board. Line LED or L LED indicates the functioning of this board. And then we're going to have two other LEDs. These are TX and the RX. So these things will represent the debugger or the USB port data transfer. So whether the data has been transferred or data has been received, received state. So this TX RX will respond with respect to the data data communication from your system to the board directly. So right. Next, we're going to have uh, the main uh, component of this board that is this IC. So it is Atmega 328P. So th this is the IC that is uh, that we have read from our books, textbooks. So most like in most of the colleges or schools, we learn uh, regarding this IC. So it is Atmega 328P and maybe like it's known as seven, uh, uh, yeah, Atmega 328P microcontroller. So this is the microcontroller which is used by this entire board uh, to control the uh, required, uh, to perform the required operations based on the code that we have written. So with respect to this IC, we have some uh, pin pinout. So let's see the pinout now. So starting from this corner. So here we're gonna have some analog input. So there's an analog in section. So analog input section. So here, uh, these are called as analog input and output pins. So these are basically a analog data structured pins, analog data type pins. And these are both input and output pins. So remember the term input and output. So I'm just telling it as both input and output. So let's see what is this input and output in further. So here, <clears throat> input and output, uh, uh, so, so analog data. So next one, at the above, exactly opposite to this analog um, pins, you're going to have 13 digital input and output pins. So from starting from 0 to 13, there are digital input and output pins. So these are called 14 digital input output pins, all of them, right? And one ground over here and there are another two grounds at the power unit so there are totally three grounds here and this is this pin is for v in you can uh, provide 5 volt supply here or you can obviously get 5 volt supply from here and same thing from here also 5 volts and these two are common 5 volts and v in this both pins are common and as i told you here there is a 3.3 volts voltage regulator which regulates the uh, input voltage to 3.3 volts. So the same 3.3 volts is given as output here because some of the sensors that are integrated uh, or that have been built are compatible with 3.3 volts. So there are sensors which are compatible only with 3.3 volts. So for such cases, uh, we can't go finding the special supply for 3.3 volts, right? So that is the reason why uh, here the uh, board itself provides the supply right <laughs> so the next one is a reset so in this uh, same scenario like how about uh, 3.3 volts uh, um, pin the in with respect like in the same scenario the reset button some boards do not have a reset button instead they have a reset signal pin so in such cases like whenever the reset button is clicked here the Arduino here resets and the same signal is sent from here to the external sensor so that the sensor also get reset. So such kind of examples, we will uh, look into them in detail. So this is the basic uh, Arduino board.
and uh, similar to this board uh, we have uh, many boards like arduino nano arduino omega arduino um uh, yes and the other versions of arduino is like esp8266 esp32 and uh, the advanced industrial type boards like stm32 blue pill stm board and next texas instrumentation so there are there are many boards in the market and even uh, the PLC also, uh, we can also connect these boards to PLC and make them auto, uh, much more advanced automate and even we can provide the internet facility for that PLC also. So, <clears throat> right. So that is uh, with the hardware specifications. So the first board, uh, Arduino UNO and uh, the software that is required is Arduino IDE software. So this is the basic version. The first version of Arduino is this. And now if you uh, try to download uh, the Arduino ID software, you will get our latest version. And uh, as uh, we go for some industrial standards and uh, need to perform some industrial things, so we only use for the older version because we will have a stable uh, working or stable stability in all the software background libraries and uh, what we call um, maintenance and everything so that's that's the reason why i'm using the older version so if you want you can go for the newer version from arduino IDE. so just go to we go to this website arduino id here you will have uh, the latest one Windows 10 and you are 64 bit. Just download it. Not required, just download. Thank you for downloading. So just again down, just download, just download. Okay. Just thank you for downloading, but maybe can you hear my voice? I think yeah. Uh, I, yeah, it's audible. It's audible, Surya. Okay. okay. We can stop okay. the chat box because people are uh, continuously pinging. So we'll uh, reopen chat only after the uh, at the end of the session. Okay. Please continue. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um. So you can download. Uh, uh, sim similarly, you can download the software from Arduino ID and. I'll show you one more thing that is Arduino ID not only gives the local or the software for uh, local machines, instead they provide the web software, web solutions also in the same way, visit this Arduino.cc and here you'll have software section. In this software section, you're going to have code online feature. So just click on it, code online feature.
just uh, so I'm signing in with my Google account. So right, so this is the web feature. I have a new version also been launched. So let's check out that. Yeah. So you see, uh, once you download the latest software from uh, Arduino IDE, Right. Uh, once you start the latest, uh, uh, once you download the latest software from Arduino IDE and install in your desktop or in your system, so you're gonna have an interface exactly similar uh, to this kind, like almost uh, this UI. So where you will find so some examples here, built-in examples. You can try with them, and you can search for uh, publicly deployed libraries and even <clears throat> You can have some references like functions, variables, and structures. So regarding the code that uh, they provide, they have some uh, G or like um, demo or the documentation which are pre-built, like functions. Here you have variables and the coding structure. So this is a good thing actually. So this is the latest feature that has been added into the editor right now. So we can follow this uh, structure to learn. So coming here, so in the Arduino ID, so this is the first version of Arduino and um, just learn this Arduino and all the features that have been uh, implemented in this Arduino that have been exactly cloned to the latest software with just they have changed this editor, that's it. The runtime editor has been changed, rest everything, uh, every option is same. So, so Unlike all other software, it has file, edit, sketch, tools, and uh, uh, help options. So in this option bar, the file option. So here with the file, uh, you're going to have uh, the new sketch. So if you click on this new sketch, a new editor with unsaved sketches open. So again, you can start from the beginning to code. The next one is you can open the existing one. And you can open the next one is you can open the recent sketch that you have saved recently or you have worked on recent days and next you have sketchbook so in this sketchbook you will have all the libraries that are used in different projects the next one you have examples so here here are the uh, thing this is this thing help us to learn more like these are the built-in examples which are built in in Arduino ID software and these are built-in examples for any board and the next one, these are built-in examples only for Arduino UNO board. And if you change the board to some other, you will get some other extra features of that board and those examples are displayed here. And next below, here are the examples of custom libraries. So these are libraries that I have installed for different purpose. So those libraries are displayed here. And most importantly, few libraries may compatible with the boards that you use and few may not. That purely depends upon the library developer who develops a library. Some people develop only for particular boards and some people develop for global boards. So that completely depends on the library, who, the publisher of the library, right? So you can close the editor, save the uh, code file, save as your code file, then print and preferences. This is important one. We'll, talk, we'll discuss this at later. The next one, undo, redo, and copy form, copy as HTML, paste, select also. So these are all the, some settings related to the uh, edit feature in the ID. The next one is sketch. In the sketch, you will have compile the code that you have written, upload the code. So you can even convert your Arduino board as a programmer. Like you can program other boards using this Arduino Arduino board. Next, so this is the special feature uh, like export compile binary where you can create the firmware from here. So if you export compiled binary, so the entire code that you are returned here is exported uh, to a binary file. So, and from there you can convert, like you'll have some hex file and uh, you'll have binary file. So those those things you can use as firmware also. 
So even with the Arduino software, you can create a firmware. So next, <clears throat> include library. So here you will have an option to search, add, or import the import any kind of external library. So if you go for manage libraries, in this manage libraries, you are allowed to search for the public uh, libraries that are available. So here, uh, here you see there are many libraries that are already deployed to this Arduino ID. So now it is just uh, listing what are installed in my system. So once it's done, you're, you're allowed to search here. So let's wait until it's done. Yeah, it's done. So, so let me search for some sensor called DHT, whatever. DHT sensor, this is already installed. And if you want to install the other version, just if you want to install DHT KXL. So this library is purely depends on the sensor that you buy. So <clears throat> there are many uh, types like in, in DHT itself, there are many types. So if you go with DHT 11 and DHT 22, so you can install this thing. And the most important thing is like the publisher. Who is the publisher is most important thing. So if you, if the publisher is, is by Arduino, just go with them. And if publisher is by Adafruit, so Adafruit is the famous and the most trusted publisher of the Arduino libraries that are available in the market right now. So if you want to choose a library, my best suggestion is like choose all the libraries by Adafruit. I mean the internal libraries, what you can able to find here. Choose by Adafruit uh, publisher because they have a standard uh, base and even they had good community also. Like you can ask them any question or ask them regarding any help. So they will help you a lot. And their work, libraries works like Jim. So this is the uh, installing of library. So we'll look in detail later. Again in sketch. But and all the there is no necessary like there is no point like all the libraries are available within the editor itself or the library manager itself so you may have to fetch some libraries uh, uh, from outside so um, for example let's go here search for a library Difficult to search all this one at repository, so let me search it over there. Okay. So, whatever, any example like it. So, uh, let's say, so M5 stack, so this is one library. So, M5 stack. Stack library. Um, so this is one example. Now what you do? Uh, so try to uh, learn regarding the GitHub and all its features because this helps a lot in the software industry and the hardware also. Uh, you see, you can find any kind of libraries that are that a publisher want to uh, publish like. If you search for all the libraries that are deployed in or even Arduino till now, what we have seen. All the things are available in GitHub. From GitHub, they will fetch and show it in their software. That's it. So coming here, we want this. Say M5 stack is not available in our Arduino software. That's why we are downloading it manually. So download the zip manually. Let me save it on the desktop. Done. Now go to the software, sketch, include libraries, add zip library. There is a feature called below the manage library. There is the add zip library feature. So let's go to that. Let's go to that. Right. 
it is yeah, here it is so m5 stack and just open it that's it so once your library is added it will show the library added to your uh, library section so check include library menu if you want to uh, check it so for that go to sketch not sketch go to file and choose examples and if you go down here search for m m5 right there it is yeah, here it is so you see uh, m5 is not compatible m m5 stack is not compatible for arduino you know that is why it is showing in incompatible section so all these things are not allowed to use with arduino uno mode sp32 cam is not allowed clean rtos is not allowed some examples are not allowed even m5 stack is also not allowed so m5 stack is a board another board this is just example so uh, <clears throat> If you want to understand it, you have to read regarding what is this M5 stack and everything. And for every library, there is an example. Definitely, there will be an example. You no need to uh, struggle with the documentation, unlike all other software um, solutions. So here you'll have all the examples pre-built. The only thing is like you have to understand some of the basics and just implement them directly from here. Just choose the demo. If I want to control the servo motor with a knob, I'll choose the demo. That's it. Just you have to understand what is what and how to uh, initialize, how to create and how to monitor and how to analyze the system. That's it. The rest of everything you have been provided within the examples itself. Okay. Right. So that is with the sketch and libraries. The next one is tools. So tools has all the functionality related to this editor or the software. Like you can format the code. You, for example, you have written the code that are not exactly in order, like not in perfect align, not in perfect uh, uh, shape or some space, extra unwanted spaces. So instead of removing them manually, just click on this auto format, all the space, unwanted spaces removed and all the uh, lines are auto aligned and everything, right? So next, manual library is what the thing you have seen just before. Serial monitor is the thing which you will see the output of the Arduino. So you need to write your serial code here. If that serial code is written and serial monitor output is shown, serial porter, the same output is shown as graphical representation. And, and this is the important thing. Before uploading any code or before undergoing with any operation with the Arduino IDE, make sure you select the board and the port. So let's say board. In board, you're gonna, you have to, uh, at, at the initial stage, you will get only this single board, Arduino AVR boards. And in these boards, you will have all the basic boards of Arduino. Uh, Arduino. So Arduino N, Arduino ENVO, so Arduino Nano, Arduino Mega, Arduino Mega ADA, Leo, uh, Leonardo, Arduino Micro, Arduino Mini, Ethernet, Arduino USB, and many more. Like, so they have uh, some basic uh, boards that are come uh, that comes inbuilt with the Arduino software, and rest others needs to be installed based on the requirements. So, for example, I need to handle ESP32 board, I need to handle ESP8266 board, and I need to handle Raspberry Pi uh, based microcontrollers. Even Raspberry Pi also has a microcontroller board known as Raspberry Pi Pico. So, for that also, I need to have a board installed. So, Raspberry Pi Pico and Raspberry Pi Pico W. And it's even STM boards also, uh, we can program STM boards also using this Arduino Uno. So for that STM boards, there is a library provided. And these are another type, STM32F1 uh, boards. <clears throat> so as of now, you'll only have uh, the Arduino Uno. Then what about the other boards? Well, how we can get those boards? So that we will uh, see in detail in the next coming two days, right? And the port. So port is the one which is used to uh, like we need to tell the system that where uh, at what uh, port our hardware is being connected. So as of now there are three ports. So these ports are coming from my Bluetooth actually. So okay, I can't disconnect the Bluetooth right now. So port uh, which comes from Bluetooth and if you connect a hardware right now to the system, then you will get uh, another extra port here. So you need to select that port. And though that are that port should be again ordinary. What are the board you have selected here? And what are the board you are connecting here? Board should be equal. If you connect ESP here and if you select the board Arduino, the code will uh, fail to upload. It will compile but fail to upload. 
and after connecting and there is a active connection between your system and the board then if you click on the get board info you will get some random information about the board right so these are the important points and these two leave it as it is do not uh, touch these two things so this is the programmer so which program do you need to use to upload to the board that is with this so this should be always it should be the default one and the next one is the help help you have all the things like get started environment and everything uh, whatever help you need regarding the code and the setup and everything. so this is the shortcut for compile shortcut for upload shortcut for new shortcut for open a new file code file and shortcut for save a code file so these are the shortcuts and finally coming to the right side so this is the shortcut for serial monitor so you will have a serial monitor here so this is a shortcut for serial monitor if you have port and click on this icon you will uh, you can able to see the serial monitor. and below at the bottom right corner you will have the board that you have selected and the port that that exactly is been selected the board and port selection options will be given at the bottom right corner. so these are the the ui graphic ui um, options of the software <clears throat> with arduino id and make sure that in the latest one you will have the same option you see the compile and the upload so here you have to select your board here you need to select your uh, file and here you need to program your file Not here you need to program your file are not comfortable with the latest version so let's go with the old version itself right so even arduino allows us to integrate the device directly so add a device so the web, web has the feature whereas the local uh, software does not have the feature that is why people now they are uh, choosing the Arduino board for the IoT. So just cloud and install the agent. I hope uh, you understand uh, how to handle the uh, the latest software. So options are uh, same and the representation that they have given is different. The UI has been updated. That's not a big, big thing to uh, deal with, right? <clears throat> Next. So the same thing, let's do it in Tinkercad, like uh, the same software operation. And the hardware, the hardware exactly looks like same uh, this board. So the same thing, and we will uh, look at uh, with the hardware, uh, hardware and the software combination, and we'll execute the code in the in this platform that is Tinkercad. I don't know what uh, what everything is done regarding the basics and how to handle the software uh, of Arduino. And now let's undergo with some operations. So the operations is like so here uh, more than uh, programming, you need to have a logic in mind. So every time in hardware, not only in hardware, in soft, in any uh, software or hardware or any any engineering things, most importantly, be, uh, not the subject is important. The logic behind the subject is the most important thing to be considered. Say, for example, here, what is the purpose of uh, your usage in user with usage with this board? So what do you want to do with this board? So for day one, let's have an example like I need to. I need to perform a LED blink with this board. So let's let's do that. Let me search LED. I have a LED. I just drag and drop here. Then I'll take a resistor. Resistor. Uh, 
So let, let's take this as a step. So let me connect the terminal here and let's connect this to what A. And uh, another one that is let's connect to the ground. So why uh, I have done this? So as I have told you, these are the digital input and output pins. How about a digital pin can able to toggle this LED? So that is the next question actually. So you see, uh, there is a or there are there's always a question in my mind like uh, how about electronics or the uh, IC chips or whatever the rest is that we are speaking about. How come they understand the language of binary? So that's a big question. So I was also surprised at the beginning stages, but later on I was able to de uh, debug it, like decode it. So you see the binary that we are speaking here, actually those are like either zero or one. The binary the data that we get here are zero or one. But uh, as we are beings, uh, human beings, or the, we are people who know that zero is binary number one and, uh, uh, sorry, uh, one is binary number uh, and zero is another binary number. But how about these electronics or these pins understand those as binary numbers? As one is what kind of binary and zero is the other kind of binary. So the only point is like, whenever you find a binary number one at any of this pin, which means that that pin has a maximum capable output of five volts. So in case of any digital pins, if you find binary number that is zero and one, if you find zero at that pin, which means the supply voltage or the voltage at that particular pin is less than 3.3 or simply zero. And if you find the binary number one, which means that the maximum voltage or the voltage that are exactly at that pin or that uh, pin level is five volts. So this is, now you see this LED can operate, uh, the LED can toggle based on the supply that you give, right? If you give five volts, it will toggle. If you give zero volts, it will turn off. So in the same way, now if you give binary number one, which means the voltage at that uh, binary number and at that pin is five volts, then the LED will turn on. And if you toggle that binary number to zero, then LED will turn off. So simple, right? Yeah. So this is the uh, most important point. And not only this, as you connected your LED directly with the resistor to pin number eight and ground, the code is automatically generated here in the code section. I don't want this. Let's go to the Thanks. So coming here, <clears throat> the code that is used to program any embedded thing, embedded uh, code is C++. So you use most important C++. And Arduino is also an embedded Arduino code, which is written in C++. So it is Arduino code is still a C++ code, which is embedded with Arduino IDE software. So here, uh, let's learn this uh, C++ code of Arduino. So here we have two main functions, that is void setup. The next one is void loop. So coming to the void setup. So void setup is a function which is used before starting actual functionality of the board. So here you need to create a setup, like you need to make the device ready uh, by changing some parameters, by changing some functionality of the device. You need to make the device ready before actually entering to the working condition. And that exactly what we need. So here, what is our example? We need to turn on and turn off or toggle this LED for every one second is our condition, right? So here, uh, these are all digital pins. But the next question is like, I already told you, like these are not normal digital pins. These are digital input and output pins, which means they can be input pins or they can be output pins. But who will uh, decide uh, which pin is input pin and which pin is output pin? So we ourselves will decide uh, which should pin, which pin should be as input and which pin should be as output in the program itself. So that is what setup. 
so that is what exactly uh, meant of meant uh, like setup so we need to set the pin modes here so in our case let's set the pin mode so what is our pin number 8 and what is the state of the pin number so in order to toggle the led it should have some incoming supply which means the pin should give some output right so this should be output done pin mode and eighth pin eighth pin is output now before in starting it will set the pin eight as output pin and once the setup is done, that means all the pins, all the uh, parameters are, is done as per our requirement. Then next, it will enter into void loop. So in this void loop, the most important condition for this void loop is like, unlike all other uh, programming languages, see, in all programming languages, the loops uh, are like exited. It, the loops can be able to exit it directly. We can able to stop the loop, we can able to uh, break the loop. But unlike those programming languages, here you will have a distinct operation for this loop. So this is void loop, that is a pre-built function for Arduino programming. This is an unbreakable loop. So if you could able to break the loop, which means you are going to stop the functionality of Arduino directly and which is going to crash the Arduino. So that is the reason why they have provided an unbreakable loop here. So void loop is an unbreakable loop. So loop is nothing but it will undergo again and again until the power supply or device got reset or power supply is disconnected. So this is here, this is the area where we will write our original working code. Right. So now what are we are dealing with digital pins, right? So let's use digital. So here, digital and digital write. The next, the pin number. So digital write. We are writing something out of the board. So we are we are giving some output to external peripherals. So digital write number pin number eight. So here the binary numbers are represented in two forms. That is either high or low. And the other form is like same zero or one. So if you mention here high and mention one, both are equal. And if you mention as low or you can mention it as zero, again, same. So now I'm, I will just use this high and low. So if the digital pin is high, if digital pin eight is high, which means that you'll have a five volt supply over here. Five volt supply. So at this point, the LED is turned on. In the next line, delay 1000. So delay. Delay is nothing but it will hold the code from execution for the amount of time that you are represented here. And the amount of time is represented in the form of milliseconds. So if you want to write for one second, that means you need to enter 1000 here. So whereas 1000 milliseconds is equal to one second. If you want to wait, like if you if you want to leave the LED to be turned on for two seconds, then you need to make it to 2000 seconds, 2000 milliseconds. After 2000 milliseconds, then again, you need to write digital, right? You have pin eight comma low. You need to, here you have turned on, right? Now here you have to turn off. So you have to turn off here. You know, if you want to turn off here, you need to pass low. Then again, wait for two seconds. You need to turn off for two seconds. Again, as this is a loop here, there is nothing to execute. Again, the loop comes here and start executing from here. After two seconds, again, starting from beginning. After two seconds, again, turn on. After two seconds, turn off. Again, after two seconds, again, turn on, turn off. These loops continue to execute it until uh, it has been disturbed using a reset button is pressed or the you power supply is been removed so let's uh, so that that is the some small very small basic introduction about the Arduino board right so let me uh, run the code run it. so 
there is an error and even it says or it seems like your code has some errors so it says in function void setup expected semicolon before the flower bracket so at this flower bracket before this flower bracket there should be a semicolon so at this line semicolon is missing so let's add it so let's see now so done our code is done and you see it's been powered up it, it's plugged in and you see the led is also been toggled so it is toggling for every one second and you can also you can also reset it every time so i'm resetting it disturbing its functionality so that's the reason why it is uh, looks like it's toggling every time so if you leave it again the function continue to execute right so this is uh, one example of arduino even just a moment So the second one is uh, we have covered some, some very small amount of basics of uh, Arduino code and there are uh, much many more uh, things like to be considered. Uh, next one, interfacing sensors and hand uh, will have some, see hands-on exercise as of now I am, limit, I am trying to limit with the simulation. So I request you to try, try to go with the simulator. So Tinkercad, just try with the Tinkercad. And you you will be provided to simulate here itself, and you are provided to write a code. And I'll tell you some more programming steps with uh, Arduino board here itself. And there are many sensors here. So there are many sensors here to work with and even they provide many examples also already pre-built examples are being given select all so many sensors there are many many sensors so let's look uh, deep into one by one right so then after uh, we will move uh, on to the next uh, one so this is so uh, Tinkercad does not have uh, all the boards just to learn it provides Arduino you know board but another website so con called as walkway.com so walkway.com is the one which have uh, the some better and advanced uh, uh, things like even it has Arduino Invo Mega Nano and it has ESP32 and it has Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller and even it has HTML32 boards also so this is the best one and even it has some examples available so you can try with uh, these examples so Arduino mega based example so some LGD keypad so for your uh, demo let me try one example so let's go here let's see how this calculator actually works so uh, you see they have provided the code to the left side and uh, you have the board Arduino Evenbo and uh, LCD display and uh, <coughs> I'm very sorry and uh, uh, a keypad so let us simulate it you see it is asking for a number so one and two plus and five equal to it's 57. It's clear. And if I want to go for next one, just press reset. That's it. One plus. This is a very uh, excellent uh, thing. So you can have this Arduino here. And let's go back and
even even it, it uh, provides some basics like so this is the another board nano the miniature version of the um, arduino board so let's go with testing microcontroller so this is so this is stm32 board uh, demo and again the same thing is being returned if you want to start again you can start from here so check out the stm32 demo here run the simulator So we are uh, again the uh, same LED blink code to this, and this is purely written in the uh, stm that you can be programmed with uh, two ways. That is one with uh, the CubeMX and the other one with the uh, Arduino IDE software itself. So here they provided an example for CubeMX, and you can even go for Arduino IDE programming also. So that is also possible. So if if those examples are not provided, then we can directly go with the hardware implementation with stm that two books. So as of now, <clears throat> let's run some more. So the next one is, so let's have some sensors. So let's do some examples here. So now you have done an example with digital pins. So let's uh, do an example with analog pins. So let's take a, let me take um, a pot. side of the pot should be given to the supply any uh, let me take five volt supply the, it should be given to the ground make sure uh, you have uh, a detailed and classified circuit connection so these are very very important the circuit uh, connection or the supply handling is very important even if you make any mistake at the signal connection that is okay fine it can be uh, adjustable but if you make a mistake at circuit power supply uh, unit failure then you will have this crash okay even if it is overloaded the sensors will damage and if you, if you, if there is a short circuit uh, for this board then the board this board may damage Right, so let's put coming in here. There are some rules. I mean, how to write the ordinal code. The rules are like all the things that are that comes under variables, libraries. If you want to include libraries and if you want to define a variable, everything should be above the void setup. Like I want to declare a pin now. So for digital pins, I'll declare in space. Say my pin is LED pin, which is dynamic. This can be, you can write any name here. Right now I'm writing in this data type. Data type, there are int string and many other. So in space, let me write LED one is equal to what is my LED pin connected to pin number eight. So let me write eight. Semicolon is a mandatory thing in C language. So after connecting eight, then just use this variable at whatever place required. So right. Okay. Now again, what I'm trying to do next as define. So this is another form of defining a variable as define 
is a potential meter so this is called a potential meter so we generally we you may get an idea if we say rheostat so if i say if we say rheostat you will get an idea that is it is a variable uh, resistor so let's define a pot has different pot space it is connected to a not as is analog so i am defining it as has defined pot a not so we can implement the mode so what is the mode that is the pot is a pin comma so here you need to read the output of the pot which means your sensor should act as input so this is very 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 important so what is the type definition of or what is the uh, property of a pin whether it should be input or output that is very very important coming to here you need to read the input value so in part value is equal to analog read analog read part analog read is another method and you, you have, what you have to read you need to read a not a not is a pin so you need to analog read get the data from a not and put it in the variable part value okay but the question is like what is the output of this part value how can we preview it it's it's not like that uh, it's not something like that uh, if you change this part value it will directly do some operation so we need to undergo what is the value of the this part that you are getting so for such kind of things there is a special uh, feature that is provided by Arduino that is serial. So we have discussed regarding serial monitor, right? So serial dot begin. Serial is the one which provides uh, the facility to uh, handle the internal operations of that uh, Arduino board to our system. So serial dot begin 9600. So what is 9600? The baud rate at which the de device uh, should communicate with. So 9600 is a, is a baud rate uh, where your laptop communicate uh, to the uh, USB or to the microcontroller at this speed, at this baud rate. So once you made serial dot begin, then yeah, just print it out serial dot print what into print for value So, part one. Let's see the output. Stop. Okay. Errors. Okay. okay, so if you open here, they have provided a serial monitor here in this uh, simulator. So if you open up here, if you open up here. the output is printing as zero, right? So now at this point, the only thing like we have made a mistake. So definitely you do a mistake. So then do you should not connect directly uh, with your own in what we call knowledge. Instead, refer uh, to the proper circuit diagram before run rooming with any connection. Okay. So the mistake that I have done here is 
simple just swap these two so here this is the plus this should be minus not this so let me zoom in Take it out. Then I'm good. So what we will do, take the round from here, from here, from here, from this end, and we will take this from here, here, and in. So now let's see the output. So right. There is a value that is being printing, and if I change this potentiometer value, and the value is getting changed, but it's not in order. So the thing is like we have written serial dot print. So once the value is printed here, the next cursor will print the value at the right side of the previous value. So which is a bit clumsy. So now what I want is like after printing a value, the cursor should go to the next line. So for that, let me stop the code. For that, you need to write print ln. So difference between print and print ln. So if you write print, once a value is printed by a serial monitor, the cursor will go, the cursor will stay at the right side of the uh, previous value. So which will create a confusion like uh, they, the both will merge. That is what you are writing. You are writing print ln, which indicates that the cursor after printing a value will move to the next line, which is exactly at the down of the previous value. So let's see the ln and let's see start split. <laughs> so you see it is coming one by one downwards. So next, if I change the uh, again, potential matter, so 61 further, I'll change zero. Increase 41. 286. So we can keep on saying. So here we are reading the analog uh, analog data. And uh, let's uh, do one thing. Based on the uh, potentiometer, shall we can we control the LED? So can we do that? based on the based on this potential meter we need to control this led the time so let's do that so what value here we have a inbuilt function let's stop simulation <laughs> into time is equal to Uh, like how much will say uh, 200 200 milliseconds to so maximum should be 0 we get zero, uh, zero from sensor minimum 0 to 1024 to maximum will be 200 milliseconds uh, to 2000 so let's say and let's give this time. So I'll explain what is this, what you have written here. So yes. Yes. So here map is the inbuilt function of Arduino, which will map our value, say our value, which we are getting from this potentiometer, right? So for example, if the potentiometer value is 61, so what is the minimum value of the potentiometer is zero and the maximum value of the potentiometer that we are getting is 1024, right? So let's see above. 
one zero two three. So let's make it two three. So if the input value is in between zero and one zero two three, then if the potentiometer value is zero, then your output here the time will be zero. And if the potentiometer is at one zero two three maximum level, and your output will be two thousand. So at minimum level you will get a 200 uh, milliseconds at as time interval where your LED will blink very fast. And at, if the potentiometer keep on increasing, as the time delay also increases here, then your LED will uh, blink very fast, very slow. So let's see the working now. Start simulation. So you see the LED. If I increase it, it's it is blinking very slow. And if I keep on increase change the potentiometer, so it is keep on blinking very fast. And if I further increase and further very slow. And if we increase totally, it is very, very slow. The blinking, the blink of the LED is very, very slow. Can you able to uh, see it? So if if we reduce the potentiometer and it is very blinking very fast, let me zoom it further. Ah, let me reduce this. So I'll change again. If the potentiometer at maximum level. You see the LED is blinking very slow and if I keep on changing the potentiometer and keep on increase the value. So if I change on change the value, then you can observe that the potentiometer LED uh, based on the potentiometer moment the LED blinking also changes. So you see the fast, it, is, it has become very fast. If I increase, it has becoming very slow, decrease and increase. So I have to observe this change. So this is one kind of automation. <laughs> I'll share uh, an example. Actually, uh, what is the biggest use of this project? So I had an example here. So uh, you might have aware of aware like uh, the robotic arms that are designed using some uh, microcontroller boards. So we had. So those have been divided, uh, designed uh, with some boards like this. Um, so the robotic arms that are designed, so we made a demo. So you can have a dynamic reprogramming, reprogrammable robotic arm using the uh, special kind of devices. So, so we use uh, this thing. So that is. So special kind of another sensor that is called servo motor. So you might have heard of what is the servo motor. So it is exactly what uh, it is similar to all other motors. That, but the one advantage or the one ability of this motor other than others is it has a feedback of the rotor's position. Like you can know at what position this uh, rotor is right now. So this is the advantage of this servo motor. So servo motor has feedback rotor position. So that you can control the rotor, like if you say rotate to 90 degrees, the rotor of the motor will rotate to only 90 degrees. And if you say rotate to 180 degrees, it will rotate to 180 degrees. So based on this concept, actually robotic arms mainly works on servo motor technology only because they have proper feedback mechanism of their rotor position. So now here we have how many servos? One, two, three, four, five, six servos. So using these six servos, uh, servos, uh, we can create a uh, robotic arm. So then, then we can uh, control <clears throat> those each individual servo with one, two, three, four, five, and six potentiometers. And we're gonna have some push buttons, same LEDs, resistors and uh, power LED or toggle LED and same it has been controlled with Arduino UNVO board and you see we have used maximum all the pins that are available in the board so we have used all the pins 
all the analog pins are used and all the digital pins are also used. So now let us see uh, and code is already been written. So this is a bit complex code to understand, but I'll show you what is the use of learning all the things and what is the uh, what kind of project that we can uh, do with this. So, right. so when the whenever a power supply is given, the servo motors initially rotates to their default position. They have done it right now. So now this button is to record the motion of the servos. First one. Let me reset again. So this is to record the motion. So let us record the first motion. First motion that is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So all the numbers that you see with this LED state blink is with binary numbers. So now 0, 1 is, which is one position. So I want my first motor to be this position. Second motor to be this position. Third motor to be this position. Fourth motor is here. Fifth motor is here. And sixth motor is here. And I want to save the state, so I need to go to next state. So it is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, which means number 2. At second position, I want my first servo motor at here, second servo motor at here, third servo motor here, and fourth servo motor here, fifth is here, and finally sixth is here. Next state, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. So binary number 1, 1, which means it is three. So for the for this position, it's here and it's here and it's here. It's here and it's here. Mm -hmm. So the last one I want to try it with. Next one is zero zero one zero zero, which is four. So let me place all the servers at center. Some more center. Center. Okay, enough. Center. And I need this also. Center. Okay, and finally, this one to the center. Now, all. Now I want to repeat this loop. So if I repeat, so this is the first position, second position, third position, and finally fourth position. And this loop continuously, it will repeat for the uh, next cycle. So by this, you can create a automation. You can create your own automation for a robotic arm. So if you implement these servo motors in real time, so this action will be continuously what uh, continuously worked for your program. And if you want to change, just hit reset. So once reset is done, again, initial positions. Now start reprogramming. Like you want to go for another positioning of uh, the robotic arm. Just again, reprogram with your servos. Reprogram all the actions. And hit next. At this point, these two things should work. And next, at this point, only this thing and this thing and this thing should work. And next, this point, second one and final one should work. And this, only three, and these two. So like this, you can perform your all the tasks directly. So the robotic arm position. So this is the biggest example that I can that I can show you. With what is the use of this uh, ordinary? And one more most important thing: if you want to implement, if you want to experiment with this kit, you can go with ordinary mode. But if you want to undergo with the industry level robotic arm build, you need to just replace this ordinary and move with our next uh, board called STM thirty. Okay. Right. So the code that you see and. You see, uh, this project is completely uh, open source. You can go for Thinkercad and search for uh, this name. You will get the project. You can clone and you can work with this. So I have left it for open uh, for everyone to use. Okay. Right. And you can just, uh, there's a normal simple code. So same thing. We have defined some variables above the void setup up to here. In void setup, we have done some uh, initializations. 
and finally in while loop you are actually working uh, based on what our requirement is right <clears throat> so coming to thinkercad so we are done with two demos that is uh, this and potential and in digital pins if you observe the closely at digital pins here so there are uh, special uh, specially mentioned digital in bracket it is mentioned as pwm so which means pulse width modulation pwm refers to a thing called pulse width modulation <clears throat> so this pulse width modulation so it has a fluctuating type digital signal so uh, we call a special signal called pwm so pulse width modulation so it has unique or it has constant amplitude so amplitude is nothing but the signal uh, wave uh, the vertical axis of the wave so, so but the time difference is different for it so what kind of sensors use such kind of signal so just now we have seen the example <laughs> this thing the server motors the server motors uses this pwm signal so let's Next experiment is with servo. So let's take this servo out. Down, power, and so next this is ground pin and this is power pin and this is signal. So let's take the ground pin. And let's let's come up here. So plus and ground pin. Let's go. Let's connect at this position. Okay, okay, we can't do that. So then, in that case, let's take another ground from here. A little bit confused of such kind of wiring, just simple. Go here, so it's a ground, so let me change the wire color to black. All the grounds will be in black from now on black here the ground also in black right and the uh, positive will be in red color so it's a traditional method to maintain all the positives in red color so let's do that red which so looks looks somewhat uh very good Wires, let's say, let's take this from here, let's go up here, from here, and so signal. Let's make it it's not well plus or minus signal wire. So let's make orange. This is also not positive, pin, so it's also signal. Let's make it orange, right? So this is. Signal here or the signal, so let's make it all. Now it's make uh, sense. Now it has a detailed, uh, clear cut uh, understanding about how to handle the uh, even the uh, connectors. So now we have connected to number three, and uh, number three is a PWM pin, and number five. Before uh, some at some digital pins, you will observe a, a wave symbol. So those wave symbol indicate that those are by default PWM pins. Default uh, by default they are assigned with PWM output or PWM functionality. Right now let's go to the code, and in this code, so from here it needs to have a special library. So servo is servo will not come with inbuilt of Arduino. So that's the reason why servo has special library. 
that is servo.h. You need to download and install it. So in here, they have provided it directly. So servo, hash includes servo. This is how you import the external libraries in C language, C++ code. In Arduino also, you uh, you need to import uh, like this, hash include servo.h. So once you're done, now you need to define your servo pin, where you have connected your servo. So I have connected it at int servo pin is equal to number three. I have to define like this. And after that, servo.attach. that you need to define the servo servo so you need to define the servo variable and servo dot attach you need to here you need to write servo dot attach and here you need to attach a pin which pin the pin that you are declared so it's pin number three that is servo pin So right after attaching, the next one is you need to control servo dot right this method. Right here. So servo dot right. What you need to write? You need to write the position. So here the position, let's say I'm giving it as 110. So let's run the code. So whenever the code is run, <coughs> the shaft should or the motor should rotate, let's say 30. Problem data. So actually, we need to write like this. So servo directly uh, will not handle the <clears throat> write function. So we need to write a loop. Stop. Define this server in the part. Okay, now let's see. It. Okay, 
Here the server is here the server is located. No, server is rotating. Like uh same thing in pause. Server server nine and server nine dot attach pin number nine. And they have mentioned the minimum and maximum PWM signal that is to be uh, sent through this pin number nine. And from here uh, we have the sweep in and sweep out. The thing is like uh what is the problem here is like we have used a delayed time interval. So now what happens, let's remove the delay. So let's remove the delay here. So now let's run. So, as I told you, only few pins works at few conditions. Nine. Okay. Start. So fine. Uh, so let's take the <clears throat> let's take the example here. So now what we will do? Uh, so let me take this out. Let me stop it here. Let's take one more example. Let's control the server directly. So it has moved to the maximum position. Again comes to zero. Again, most of my solution comes to zero. Here, instead, what we will do, we will club up this, like, say, uh, the potentiometer. Let's take this port, port value here and let's come up here. So, based on the potentiometer, we need to control the knob. So, whatever we have done in the previous example, let's do that. So, With this spot, analog read A naught, and you need to map from 0 to 1023. You need to go with 500 to 2500 because the, those are the minimum and maximum values of our PWM signal. So, this time, let's go one thing, let's go to 180. Yes. So let us run check. Oh, sorry. Uh, we need to add the potential meter also. <clears throat> let me take this spot again here. So terminal one. Let's make it as positive and terminal two. Let's make this. Let's make it as negative. And finally, the middle mm -hmm. uh, terminal three. It is the signal. So let's should connect to A now. Okay. Now let's run it. Pause. 
So let's uh, check it manually at 10 degrees. Start the code. Move to 10 degrees. Stop it. So then let's do fast position. Let us run it. Um, A not. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll have different pin mode. So, pin mode. It is input. Um, sorry, uh, which pin? A not. Or part. Part, comma, it should be input. See that begin. Dot begin. So if we use the serial dot begin, 9600 is the border, right? then so let's see. Start. In the serial monitor. So the port is given zero. That is a problem. So here one side is connected to plus, another side is connected to minus. In and it's connected to the ground. So we have one more ground here left and middle. This color. Which in the middle one should be orange. And this should be black. Okay, um, let's see the previous one. Same thing, red five volts. This is, um, I feel that this VM pin is not working with here, so I think this is the same issue. So let me do one thing take the bot out. Okay, let's now start. Uh, so that is a problem. So make sure that this beam pin is not working here. So you do not connect this anything at here. So now if, I, if you change the pot, so depending on the pot value, the servo motor uh, keep on responding. So actually in hardware, beam pin also works. It will give the output and it will also take input. You can give input supply here 5 volts and you can take output supply from here 5 volts. That is both uh, is possible. But do not give any kind of input supply here, uh, uh, like 5 volts. So whenever you want to give a supply, you have to give the input supply from here itself, either from DC jack or from USB port. <clears throat> you only try to get the supply from here, that's it. So here I have connected both at uh, one place. And now uh, we can change the servo motor position based on our potentiometer. So let's go back to our example. So let me take this servo motor pin from here and attach it directly. So that we can go to code. In the code we have a nine. It wait uh, and uh, depending on the part value. Uh, again, we need to map the part value. So let me map it. Same part, based on the same part, uh, I'll map the same uh, thing. Right. So map the same part value from 0 to 1023 and 0 to 18. <coughs> now let's run it. So depending on one single LED, Again, a mistake. So the mistake is I have defined at pin number three and I have connected to pin number nine. So problems, uh, the identifying a problem and uh, solving it as soon as possible is important. First, identifying is important. 
solving later on we can uh, take it to consideration that is fine so so you see both the led as well as the servo both are controlled at a time and the servo control is also depends upon the led control if the led blinks faster servo control is much more faster and if the led is blinking slower with this with respect to same led the servo also is being controlled as slow as the led blinks so here we are representing that servo is controlling very slowly and whereas if you come to at this position so here servo is responding very fast and led is also blinking very fast so this is uh, how uh, we can create one more automation and here we have today we have covered uh, um, almost uh, three things that is the basics of Arduino and the next one is the digital pins the hardware uh, parameters the digital pins and uh, analog pins how to manage the power supply and <clears throat> Uh, how to uh, consider the analog pins and next one in digital pins what is the ability of another uh, category of digital pin that is pwm signal so that is the ability of the pwm signal assigned to some of the digital pins so with this pwm signal we have seen an example how to control with uh, servo motor and the example consists of using single uh, analog data or potentiometer you need to control the led blink state digitally and with the same potentiometer you need to control the uh, pwm uh, signal based servo motor uh, using a pwm signal based on the potentiometer value so the thing is been done and the code is also been written we have also seen the basics of the code again i am repeating the synopsis so the synopsis is like <clears throat> most important point is like you have to consider the power supply so for servo motor if you give 3.3 volts and if you keep on uh, running Either of them, uh, either of these boards will get damaged. Either the board will get damaged or the. Uh, so here the voltage rating of the board is uh, five volts, and you are giving only three point three volts. So here, yeah, um, servo motor has ability to handle, but some sensors may get damaged for getting under voltage. And if if the sensor has three point three volts rated and you are connecting to five volts, then immediately the board is get damaged uh, due to over voltage. So that is the thing and. Most importantly, we should not uh, over voltage also. So say, let me delete this. I forgot which pin it is actually. It has been number eight. So let me connect directly. Eight directly. And if you run it. So here there is a indication. Current through the LED is 52.5 milliamps while recommended maximum is 20 milliamps the usable lifetime of the LED may be reduced. So here you are getting just a warning, but actually in practical use case, the LED will be burned. It will get damaged. Here just in simulation, it is giving a warning that you are, you are exceeded the current, current supply for the LED. So he, this, is, this has over voltage. So that is the reason why it will get damaged. So that is the reason why I have added resistor at the beginning itself. So now if we add the same resistor, So now there is no uh, kind of like warning or error. And if you want to increase the intensity of the light, just change the resistance to 1K. Just change ohms. Let's add 220 ohms. So this is enough. And let's run the simulation. So now it will be much uh, brighter than the previous one. So if we go here. So if I go here. Last minute. Right. So this is how uh, it works. And coming to the code. So for this, before uh, void setup, you're going to declare the variables. So these variables might consist of the, uh, what we call the pin numbers or data handlers or data holders. And before the variable declaration, you need to have a section. So this section should contain the external library. If at all, if you have an external libraries, they can be imported at this portion and after that below the variable declaration you need to have the library variable declaration so you see these are your inbuilt variable declaration and these are the library variable declaration so here you have three points first one initialize or import the library external library second one define the inbuilt required variables data variables example 
uh, int LED1 for LED pin, int pot for analog sensor input, and servo pin for servo uh, PWM signal pin. And next, define the variable, uh, library variables, like we are using servo library, so servo keyword, servo data type or servo keyword and servo uh, variable name. And after defining all the three things above wired setup, then you need to set up your Arduino in order to work with all the three equipment. So first one, LED. So for LED, we need to give output. So we are defining LED pin act as output and pod pin should be act as input. And serial begin, uh, this is used to monitor the internal operations of the Arduino board. And finally, servo dot attach. So here, we are uh, for servo library, we are attaching pin number nine in order to generate PWM signal. Okay. And next, in void loop, we are actually performing our task. The task is read the potentiometer value, convert them to timestamp, like so using map function. So here, potentiometer values comes from 0 to 123. So for example, if the potentiometer value is 61, which is in between 0 to 1023, then you will get a output of 202, which is in between 200 to 2000. So if the potential matter value is increased from 0 to 103, then the output time, the output that you are getting here also increased from 200 to 2000. So that based on that time, you are controlling, you are toggling the LED state. And based on the potential matter value, we have added one more mapping condition for servo motor to rotate simultaneously with respect to the uh, timer delay. So uh, that thing we have done here. So map pot value from 0 to 1023 generate 0 to 180 value. So those value is given to the servo motor that is from pin number I to servo motor. Then, uh, then uh, both the functionality will be done simultaneously by simulating the outputs like this. So, LED also toggles slowly and servo motor also responds very slowly. Whereas coming to here, LED toggles faster, servo motor also responds very fast. So with a small change also servo motor will respond and coming to here, LED responds slowly and servo motor also responds slowly. So you see with a big change also it is responding very, very slow. If I come here. Again, it responds fast. Small change also, it responds fast and LED also blinks very fast. So this is an example for today. Tomorrow, uh, we will see the hardware directly. So tomorrow, I'll, I'll share my camera, mobile, I'll join with my mobile camera and uh, share the camera. And we will implement hardware equipment, what you all learned today. And I request you to uh, visit the website that I have told you and just check out those examples and try to uh, undergo with uh, demos before uh, coming uh, tomorrow. And if you're interested to add, uh, and if you're interested to uh, work with the hardware of hardware, just try to purchase uh, an Arduino and some jumper wires and some uh, like LEDs or servo motors. Very, uh, in they, those are budget friendly. So you can, you can get them in Amazon or robo.com. So there are multiple online um, platform which serves them. So we can undergo practically, like you can have the hardware and I can have the hardware. I can visualize the hardware directly from here. Itself. So uh, that's all uh, for today. Uh, for today's session, do you have any questions? Please let me know. Uh, hi Surya, thanks, thanks for your session. Uh, uh, yeah, I see so many of them leaving just as soon as you said the session is done. What we'll do is I've shared them the uh, feedback link. They can put their questions, which we can take it as a first part in, the, in tomorrow's first 15 minute session. Mm -hmm. Would that be fine? Um, right, Pavan, we'll look into your uh, query. Anybody else have any questions?
chatbots uh, can they can uh, message in chat box they want don't want to speak yeah, i have already enabled the uh, chat box for them and they select okay. questions uh, um, so we can wrap questions it. just put them now yes we uh, the session is available on uh, youtube uh, guys you can look into our page we will share it with details uh, as soon as the session has been uh, finished coming to certificates we had many questions uh, people who are attending all the three day session would get the certificates so, so see you guys tomorrow uh, thank you so much for your patience listening thanks surya for your time uh, um, we'll meet back tomorrow guys thank you have a good day guys definitely yes, thank you thank you Thank you. Mm -hmm.